Hello and welcome to another AIC video. Pretty excited for this one. Uh, it's not very often that I get two laptops that are of the same generation but different specifications. Typically I get whatever Lenovo sends me for review. These are older laptops, but I was able to get my hands on both of these. So the one on the right is one I've had for a while now. It is my P14S Gen 2. It has an Intel processor, Core i7, and a NVIDIA um, T500 graphics card. And on my left, I have a P14S Gen 2 as well, but this one is with the AMD processor. And so they came out at the same time, different specs. Um, they both have the same amount of RAM, slightly different storage. Um, but I wanted to open them up, compare the internals, and do some benchmarking. I thought that might be interesting to somebody. Uh, when opening them up, just a couple of things. Depending on your model that you have, if you have one that has a SIM card tray, you can tell that because this has that hole and it goes in the back here. Um, you need to eject that before you can take the back cover off. If it does not have a hole, it will have a blank like this one does there, and you will not need to um, eject that before trying to pull it out. So if it has a hole, um, you need to eject it. Anyways, so uh, the other thing that will happen is the heat sink will get caught here along the edge and you'll pull it up and bend it. And you don't wanna do that. So you need to be careful on this side. The other place that it gets stuck a lot is this little tab right here. Get stuck on that clip. I found that a spudger works good to pop that open. And that's the same on both of them. And on this side, along these ports, um, it doesn't want to come around the ports. The case back does. So having something like this, a guitar pick to widen that gap a little bit, makes it a lot easier to come off. And you always want to get the back first, then the sides, and then it flips up. If you try to pull the front edge, you will break these clips. And then whenever you rest your palm rest on this, it will squeak and be annoying and feel loose. So anyways, let's go ahead and get these back covers off and take a look. All right, so we do have some pretty significant changes here, but also some similarities. Uh, first thing I notice is blue PCB versus green PCB. Kind of interesting, not a big deal either way, but it is different. Both do have a single RAM slot with soldered RAM. These both have 32 gigs total with 16 soldered and a 16 gig DIMM. The heat sinks look like they are identical with two heat pipes. However, this one does cool both a CPU and a GPU. So it is a little bit uh, better anchored, but uh, again, this one has two heat pipes for just the single die. So this one probably gets better cooling than this one does just because this one has to pull double duty. One thing I like about the AMD is the Wi-Fi adapter is socketed, whereas on the Intel, it is soldered. Now it is an Intel chip, but I have had these fail in the past. And that is to me something that could be an issue down the line. Um, probably not, but could be. Um, Storage is in the same place, more or less. The, neither of them have a thing for the WAN, though this does have the antennas for it. This one does not. So this might have had it at some point. When I bought this, it didn't have RAM or storage. I added those myself. So it might have had the additional card. That's why it also probably has this tray for the uh, WAN. So... As far as the battery goes, let's see here. We have uh, 43, 45 milliamp hours on this one. 4380. So uh, this one has a slightly bigger battery, even though it looks nearly identical. Both have the drain hole here. So overall, very similar. Obviously, they're in the same chassis. So there's only so much they can do to change the layout. All the ports need to be in the same place. The exhaust needs to be in the same place. So let's go ahead and put the back covers back on and we will do some benchmarking with these. All right, so we're gonna run uh, the Cinebench benchmark here in just a moment. Sorry, not Cinebench, the uh, Passmark benchmark. 
uh, on both machines at the same time. Again, on the left is the AMD, on the right is the Intel. You can tell that because I have on the Intel, because it's my personal machine, I have a vinyl skin on here. I've been buying these vinyl skins from the same guys on eBay for forever. I love them. The only problem I have with them is they can take a while to show up, but I'll link, link to them in the video description. Um, they don't always have for the P14S, but it should be the same for the T14 uh, Gen 2. I believe they're the same chassis, so you should be able to use it for both systems. Uh, now, I don't know if you can hear it in the video, just on this loading screen, the uh, P14S with the Intel, or excuse me, with the NVIDIA graphics uh, is already spinning up pretty loud, and you can see that the CPU and GPU are a bit higher than they are on the AMD. So already that double heat pipe on the single chip versus that doing dual duty on the uh, Intel with the dedicated graphics is making a difference as far as noise goes. So we're gonna go ahead and run benchmark and I'll talk a little bit more about where the AMD came from here. So I bought this one, the Intel, about eight months ago, nine months ago, something like that, not quite a year ago. Um, I bought it for about $350 on eBay. I thought that was a pretty good deal at the time. Uh, it's something I really wanted. I have had the P43S in the past, though it did have a much higher resolution screen. Uh, I've had the uh, T25, so the, my 25th anniversary, and that's kind of what this replaced, is I did sell my uh, 25th anniversary for what I felt to be a pretty good price, but wanted a slightly higher end laptop with some gaming chops and so that's why i bought this one uh the amd uh, a friend of mine had this and owned it uh, but they smashed the screen on it and they were not comfortable replacing the screen themselves and so they ended up buying themselves a different laptop and so they uh gave this to me for free and i bought what i thought was the correct screen and paid 40 dollars for it it was the wrong screen uh, this ended up actually having the touch screen, which has a different pinout. And so I ended up paying another $80. So I'm $120 in on this laptop. And what's probably going to happen is I'm going to give it to my wife. Uh, my wife has been using an X280 for the last couple years. And while it's a great laptop, uh, she does run into issues pretty frequently where it does not have enough RAM. And so I'm hoping that 32 gigs of RAM should satisfy her uh, Amazon shopping needs and give her uh, the breathing room uh, that she wants uh, on a system. She doesn't game at all, so I'm not looking for graphics performance, but uh, she does do a lot on her laptop. It also has a touchscreen, uh, as I said, so that is something she really likes is having a touchscreen. Her X280 has one as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and let this benchmark finish up, and then we'll run a different one and get an idea of what we're working with.
All right, so we got our scores here. Uh, the only scores I'm really looking at are the CPU mark and the 3D mark. Uh, those are the ones most important. Uh, <clears throat> disk, that just depends on what disk you have in there. Same with the memory, what speed it's running at. Um, DDD mark, I really, that number has really no meaning to me, honestly. Because uh, stuff with high-end graphics cards tends to get pretty low 2D marks. I'm not quite sure why. Anyways, as far as the CPU mark, the AMD handily wins this. Uh, it's got almost 3,000 more points. Um, and it definitely feels snappier in certain applications. Um, it does have a lower uh, 3D mark. The thing is, though, is that really important? Um, let's go ahead and do one more benchmark, and then we'll play a game on this to see what we really get with our better graphics card. So I'll go ahead and load up another benchmark, and we will go through that one. All right, so we have Cinebench R32 loaded up here. We'll just do the multi-core uh, benchmark here. All right, we are done, and it's really not even close. On the AMD, we have a score of 6907. On the Intel, we have a score of 5196. That's almost a 2,000 point difference between the two. And a big part of that is the fact that the AMD has eight cores and 16 threads, where the Intel only has the four cores and eight threads. This is just before they came out with the P cores and E cores and having more cores in the system. The AMD really is walking away with this competition. This does still have a better GPU. So let's go ahead, rearrange things just a little bit and we'll open up a game on this just to see uh, what the experience is for gaming. And if we're if it's really worth going with the slower CPU to get the better GPU, you know, it is even worth it because you may not even be able to game with it. So let's go ahead and load up a game here real quick. All right, so I've gotten back into Power World pretty heavily. So we're gonna go ahead and try that one just because that's the game I'm currently playing the most right now. Again, this is the Intel system. We're booting up here. And so it doesn't like the graphics driver run across that in the past, but should still work. Let's go to options. Let's. Mute that. 
So we're on low presets and we're getting barely 60 frames a second. Let's go ahead and start a game here real quick. And that was just in the menu. We're already dropping into the 30s, 19, two. <laughs> I'm gonna say load up here. We are able to be in like the 40 frames per second which is not great, uh, but it would be what I could consider to be playable. Um, and again, th this isn't like the most high-end game either. So, you know, we're not dealing with a, a AAA tier one game. Um, this does require a little bit of horsepower to run, but nothing crazy. Um, but definitely something I wouldn't try to be competitive playing, but it would be fine if you're just casually playing like I am. I have this on set pretty easy on the mode because I like to sit and <clears throat> play my uh, while my kids are getting ready for bed at night because they can't all shower at the same time uh, I usually pu pull this up and have an audiobook playing in the background for those who have finished getting ready for bed or those who are waiting until they'll watch me play while we go through that process so a uh, casual playing um, 40 frames per second is okay uh, not the best um, definitely something that uh, you know I'd want a few more frames oh we're getting up into the 50s now all right let's go ahead and actually sign out and we'll switch over to the uh, AMD and see you know just how different this experience is with the slightly I shouldn't say slightly, with the lesser graphics. So give me just a second, we'll switch on over. So we're in like the 20s FPS. Uh, let's see if we can adjust the options at all. Graphics. We're gonna change them to very low and see What that does for us now we're still in the uh, 17 19 frames per second so definitely a drop like you know we're half of the frames that we were on the Intel system however I'll stop talking for just a second and I want you to listen just how quiet this system is compared to the other one that was just it's like a jet engine trying to take off right so this one is so much quieter and you know if you're using this on a day-to-day basis it's it's not even a question that the AMD is the one you'd go with simply for the heat and the noise to the fact that I'm kind of worried that the other one uh, my Intel system might have a bad thermal paste job I got to check or something I don't know it's so much louder but I'll go ahead and shut up for a second So that's probably good enough. The fan just now kind of kicked on to a point where I can actually hear it. Um, it's so quiet. And yeah, we're in the 20 frames per second. I wouldn't want to fight a big battle. Like if I was playing this multiplayer, I definitely wouldn't want to play it. But man, it is sure okay. Like I'm not unhappy with playing it. It's not unplayable. Um, so, you know, if you're a real casual gamer... The AMD is, I, I think, falls under the sufficient category. Like, it's really a lot better than I was expecting it to be. That's the thing. It's better than my expectation was. Um, and I kind of regret buying the um, Intel uh, version of the system.
Like, uh, it's an honest opinion. I wish I had bought the AMD. Anyways, uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, go ahead and leave those down below. I'll do my best to answer. Um, I'm going to keep both systems for now. Like I said, the AMD is going to become my wife. So I, I have a skin or on order for it for her, um, and it will be an early quote-unquote Christmas gift for her. Uh, she's been wanting a new system. Uh, she already knows it's it's hers. She uh, saw the screen get delivered and <laughs> was wondering what it was. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, get that going for her. Anyways, again, thoughts or comments, leave those down below. Thank you for watching. Hope you have an amazing day.